Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here with Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be going through some of the modulation plugins in Adobe Audition that we use all the time in post production and how to get through them. Well, let's roll. All right, we're here in Adobe Audition. And if you've never used Adobe Audition before, we invite you to come to cinemasound.com and stream our Adobe Audition 1, 2, 3 product, which takes you from, I've never used Adobe Audition before, I don't know how anything works, all the way to having great Hollywood level deliveries and real facility with the program. But here we have a couple of clips, just like we have in any nonlinear or editor or digital audio workstation. We've got some dialogue here. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. And we have an ambience in stereo. Very long ambience, as they should be. All kinds of fun stuff in here. A little, I think that's an owl, I'm not totally sure. All right, so let's pull up some of these modulation source plugins. And a modulation, we don't really use it that often in, um, you know, just straight like mixing dialogue, music, and effects. But when we're making effects or we have to come up with something that's kind of weird and eerie, we use these kinds of plugins all the time. And Audition has some winners. To make a, to, to instantiate a plugin on a clip, which is what most people do, we just simply select the clips that we want and go to effects and choose modulation in whichever of these four we like. Or we can go to the effects rack under the clip effects and pull down these menus here. But what we want to do in the mix and typically all the time is apply these to channels, to tracks. So to put this onto a track, we go to the effects rack and make sure we click track effects and then we're gonna instantiate this first one and it will apply to all of the clips on this track, modulation and chorus. It looks like a really complicated program for, or a plugin for what it does, but it's amazing. We've been using chorus units since the 80s. So let's see what happens here on this dialogue track. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7. Sort of sounds like a little bit of a delay, which is in fact is what a chorus unit is doing. It's delaying one side and pitting it against the other in some on the other. Uh, let's see, so we have how many voices and or, or how many uh, generators of cool chorus sounds can we create? Two is very, very mild, and we can go out to 16, which, and I don't know of any chorus plugin that goes that far. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. You can really hear that difference from, say, one. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Which is super, mo super mono and super mild. Remember, this is a mono source that all of a sudden is very stereophonic. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. We also have this decay or delay time if we bring this to zero. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. It's no longer a delay, but it's very, very stereophonic, sort of a little Zulu going on. And then how fast is this delay rate going? We can make this go super fast. We've proven we could take... In fact, let's make this go a little longer. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. You know that... We've proven we could take on the Klingons. Let's make it like half that far. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... Super cool. We can also add feedback, which really exacerbates the problem of this effect. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. And if we make it long decay... We've proven we could take on the Klingons. You can get some wild stuff, make this uh, the rate very slow. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. Lots more feedback. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. Pretty wild stuff. Let's keep the feedback to a minimum here. Keep the keep it to a dull roar. Then we have the stereo spread. How wide do we want this? We've proven we could take on the Klingons. Pretty doggone wide if we want. And then the modulation depth itself. This is just delay so far that we've been dealing with in chorus. With modulation, we can turn this way up and really start messing with it. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. That's pretty amazing at this slow, uh, slow hurt, one tenth of a hurt. Let's go up to five hertz. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. And we can actually use the highest quality, which doesn't add that much to it. We've proven we could take on the Klingons. And this is where you can actually get into binaural beats if you're into that kind of thing. So, uh... We've proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... We've proven we could take on the Klingons. And if we add a nice delay rate and some feedback... We've proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... Pretty wild stuff. There's your stereo field on a narrow... Uh, oh, sorry, in a regular old feed, in a regular way, this would be mono. We proven we could take on the Klingons. Where it sort of sums everything afterwards. And then you have add binaural cues. We proven we could take on the Klingons. And then it averages the left and the right so you don't get you know an overload on one We've side. We proven we could take on the Klingons. Which doesn't happen that often. And then your regular output level where you can have the dry signal and the wet. The usual thinking about chorus units, uh, chorus idea, is that the, you want the dry signal and the wet signal to be 50-50. 
We approve when we take on the cleanups. For a maximum setting, let's turn this feedback off and the rate down, the modulation rate, pull it way down so it's a little more useful. We approve when we could take on the cleanups. But the D7. So we do all wet and no dry. We had proven we could take on the Klingons. It gets really, really intense adding that dry signal. We had proven we could take on the Klingons. Kind of gives us a little more of a basis. So that's a straight chorus. It's really, really powerful in Adobe Audition. One of the most powerful chorus plugins I've ever used and easy to use. Now here's the chorus flanger, much more simple, but much more radical a sound. You can choose to be the basic chorus which is, uh, let's call it a speed of uh, a hurt. We'll make the hurt, uh, the width really wide, the intensity really strong, and the transients there. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. It has the same effect as what we were just looking at, just no delay, per se, make the transients high. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But with flanger... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And it, we, it's a, it has that... We used to hear back in songs in the 80s all the time, like from Duran Duran. We make this really, really slow, make the width wide, the intensity strong, and the transients low. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. If we make the intensity smaller, we'd proven we could take on the Klingons. That rare sound kind of goes away, and if we make the width narrower, we'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7... You get a higher pitch and all kinds of other things like that, and of course with the speed down full... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. Cool. And then let's move on. I'm going to get to the ambience here in a second, but I just want to run through these. Here's a straight flanger, which should be a very complicated plugin, which this is. Again, you have the delay, but it's much more pronounced, a different delay setting. You have stereo phasing. How much of the repeating is you have going on? Let me show you. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Let's see, modulation rate. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 uh, where's changed Where's my modulation rate? There it is. I want to slow that down. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. It's a lot more pronounced. There's a definite pitch going on in a flanger that usually isn't present in a chorus. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Let's see what's special. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. There we go. And sinusoidal. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. So that's a pretty wild, you know, effect. We usually use this flanger, as we've seen, shown you in the education, the cinema sound education, to have the feeling like things are going away, like they're falling away or they're getting closer. And that kind of sound. And flangers are pretty much the tool that we use to do that. If we make the mo the problem with this one is that the modulation rate doesn't actually go to full zero. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. So it, it sort of oscillates when we don't want it to. Otherwise, what we could do... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. And it is, it is have it, you know, move as if a, a spaceship were moving away or something. In fact, let's here, let's listen to these ambiences. Like it was moving away or coming in close? The other problem is that it's a little bit of zipper noise. You hear that ticking that's going on as I move the which isn't so great. We're not so happy about that. So uh, let's see, one more to look at. Here's the phaser, yet another different way of doing crazy modulation. Again, with the intensity, and like we had with chorus unit, we have stages or generators. Here's a one generator. Uh, actually, let's go back to the voice. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons, but the D7 changed all that. With a one stage, there's not a lot. You can just barely hear this phasing going on, but when we go to six... We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. You hear this? Let's really crank on We'd this. proven we could take on the Klingons. Whoa! But the D7... It really messes with you Zulu-wise in your head. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7... So the feedback, as you can hear, makes that audible pitch in both the flanger and this phaser. And we really run it up. We get a, you know, like another instrument We'd line. proven we could take on the Klingons. But the D7 changed all that. And of course, speeding up the mod rate. We'd proven we could take on the Klingons. Pretty wild, wild stuff, especially if we apply it to the ambience. Pretty wild stuff. So now we've already listened to the flanger. Let's go back to the chorus flanger, see what that does for us here in these ambiences. Width. Intensity, transients, as opposed to with it off, 
very subtle on the chorus, but with the flanger, pretty subtle here too. Let's see here. And then if we go back to the chorus again, just that straight chorus, all voices. Decay time is here, decay rate is, delay rate is here, modulation. Highest quality, add binaural cues. Decay and wet. A little feedback, average left and right. Big spread. And we turn it off, there it is. It's pretty wild stuff for adding weird ambiences to both vocals and ambiences. But that's the general gist on how we use these modulation plugins, all four of them in Adobe Audition. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you uh, and maybe even the hundreds of other videos that we have here on the Cinema Sound channel. If so, please subscribe to this channel and like it and come visit us at cinemasound.com so that you can possibly get even more value from our hundreds of blogs and education bits and streams uh, so that you can get that Hollywood level production value into your productions. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you